Hello and welcome to everybody who's listening to this recording. This video is for students all around the world who believe in the importance of accreditation and want to at some point add a professional accreditation to their evidence portfolio. And why wouldn't you? When you're trained, qualified and experienced, you want the world to know you're a professional. And as a professional, you want to stand out in what has become a very noisy, crowded digital space, particularly with people calling themselves coaches who aren't necessarily trained, qualified and accredited. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to this information. We hope you're going to enjoy it and that it's coming just at the right time of your training. I'm Aurora Dawn Campbell. I'm the business director at the IAPCNM, and I'm an accredited fellow coach and mentor. And today, as you can see in the hot seat, I'm joined by Bettina Pickering, who's an accredited master coach and mentor and supervisor in training. Hello, Bettina. Hi, Dawn. So we hope you're enjoying your coach training journey so far. I'm sure you've worked very hard to get here. And I hope you're remembering to celebrate every step of the way. Now, you may have heard the quote that the quality of your life depends on the quality of your communication. Hopefully, you've started to notice those improvements in your personal and professional communication and conversations as a result of adding coaching to your skill set. You're joining an exciting and rewarding industry, the second fastest growing one in the uh, the world. You won't be surprised to know the number one is IT. And to work in the coaching industry is truly a privilege. It's a fairly unique position that we find ourselves in, holding space to support our clients achieve their personal and professional goals. And that's why it's an honor to call ourselves trained certified coaches. That's our experience anyway, having coached for nearly 20 years. And post COVID qualified coaches like you will be are needed now more than ever. So we're going to take you on a two part journey in this video. The first part is how to gain your professional accreditation in eight easy steps. Because we know that this isn't easy on your own. And we'd like to accompany you on that journey as part of your dream team. And secondly, we'd like to support you to achieve a return on investment of your training and achieve your dream business. And we'll do that by sharing with you what you get over and above your accreditation fee in terms of return on investment. So CPD and business building support there'll be an opportunity to answer some of the most popular questions that Bettina and I get asked as well. So there's no need to take notes because you're welcome to have a copy of this slide deck afterwards, a little bit of bedtime reading. So the coaching industry um, has evolved beyond all recognition since Bettina and I trained. Um, I'm a holistic health and business coach. What's your specialism, Bettina? Um, I'm an executive coach and a trauma-informed coach. And it's fast becoming a $3 billion industry, which is a 21 imp uh, increase, 21% 21 increase in the last nine years. So this speed of change means it's estimated to continue at about 5.5% year on year. Now, this makes it imperative that you stay informed um, about your industry and you can do this in a number of ways. One, you can add a professional accreditation to your evidence portfolio, because when you're accredited, you're a member of a like-minded community. And this is one of the key ways of staying abreast of the evolution that continues to shape our industry. And it's the only way you'll keep your newly acquired skills relevant and on point. Now, we suggest you do your due diligence when choosing your accreditation body in the same way you do when you make any purchase. It's got to be based on your needs, your budget and your expectations. And of course, we're in the business of having a conversation. So speak to the accreditation bodies on your cho choice list. They should be delighted to speak to you. And if they're not, then just move on. You obviously have a choice of country specific European or international accreditation bodies like ourselves. 
So just a brief definition of accreditation versus certification, which obviously you're going to receive at the end of your coach training course versus accreditation, which comes later. So it's important you understand that differentiator, particularly seeing as you're coming through an accredited training provider route. So you're going to see our logo on your certificate. So your certificate demonstrates that you have successfully completed a training course and have acquired the necessary knowledge, skills, and potentially some experience to practice as a coach. And that qualification is yours for life. In the same way as when you learn to drive, you can drive for life. Accreditation goes one stage further. It ensures you are practicing those newfound coaching skills morally, ethically, and within the correct level of your capability for you and your clients. So simply put, when you have had your evidence portfolio validated, you've had your skills assessed by an independent third party. Now, that's really important. You are saying to your clients that you can be confident that you have the skills and the experience to deliver what you say you can deliver. In essence, they can trust the quality of the work that you're going to be doing together. Accreditation is like a driving license in so much as it's only valid as long as you're practicing within your capability. I tend to think of accreditation as the cherry on the cake, celebrating all your hard work, all your training, commitment to your profession. And of course, it proves to your clients that you are a best in class practitioner, you care about your industry, and most importantly, you care about them. Finally, you can gain a certificate on social media in a matter of hours, such as a weekend online course for very little money. But to become accredited, you have to prove that you have served your apprenticeship and put in the hours and got some experience practicing as a coach. So when is the best time to apply for your accreditation? Well, you're welcome to apply at any stage of your training. You just won't become accredited until your training provider has signed you off as successfully having completed your course. In the meantime, you'll be pending accreditation. And that means you have got full access to all the resources. And Bettina's going to go through some of those in more detail later. But it means that you can build your business with us while you're studying and you will be able to have access to thousands of pounds worth of CPD and business building support while you study. So the first step to sorting out your accreditation and working out what is the right stage for you is we meet in one-to-one -one situations or in on residentials or on video like this. But for the sake of time, we're going to assume that you're all coming through an accredited training provider. You're all coming through at the entry level, which is practitioner coach. And now I'm going to hand over to Bettina, who's going to take you through exactly where you can find that on the website. Brilliant. Thank you, Dawn. Let me just go quickly to share my screen. Just very slow to that. Okay, let me just share my screen now. And just while Bettina's doing that, I'll just reiterate the ATPCR is accredited tri training provider coach route. So that's the one we're looking at for the purposes of today. Yeah. So when you come onto our website, um, so you should be seeing my screen now, you click on coach accreditation and that will take you to the accreditation options. And as Dawn has already mentioned, and I'm just um, scrolling down um, here, we will be looking at the accredited practitioner coach and the ATPCR route. And this is the accredited training provider route where your training provider has already done an awful lot of work, which means you get a discounted rate for accreditation. So let's have a look at the criteria and how to apply. It's actually very, very simple. All of the criteria are listed here. So I'm just going to show you what they are. Not that many, 
actually. So let's go through them from the top. What are we looking for from you? Actually, this first bit, which is called qualifying criteria, what you need to have. In fact, most of that is already provided by your training provider, which is the first and the third one. So the coach specific training hours are included in your training. So you don't have to worry about those. Then the coaching experience, the 60 hours, that's something you will have to provide. And we'll come to that um, shortly, how you will provide that. But that could be um, peer coaching. It could be um, um, other voluntary coaching, friends, family, but also you may already have paying clients that you will use for that. The next one, the CPD preceding 12 months, we assume that's part of, again, your training that you're getting from your training provider. So again, this is recommended if you want to provide that, if you've done other uh, training, then you're welcome to do so, but it is recommended only, so it's not required. Now, the evidence. So this is what we need to see. So this is like documentation. So if you look at it, what we need to have, obviously, is your training certificate from your training provider, um, which we'll, you'll get at the end of your training. We don't need the course agenda because, again, your training provider has already taken care of that with us. Remember the 60 coaching hours that we spoke about? So what we're looking for is a coaching log showing those 60 hours. That's it. You know, you just record basically every time you do any coaching with anybody, is it 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, um, be it online, on the phone, so say face-to-face, -face, friends, family, peers, um, paying clients, you record those. And this is what you send back in. The CPD log is, is not required at this stage, it's recommended, but it's something we're assuming is, is done as part of your training. Client testimonies you don't need. Um, if you go for a higher level of accreditation, then we will ask for those. Um, the signed code of professional conduct, we'll send that to you in your welcome email, and then what we need you to do is read it, and if you agree with it, sign it and send it back. The next one is a coaching agreement and contract template. At this stage of your um, accreditation, so the basic level, that's only recommended. However, um, if you wanted to send one in for review and some feedback, you're very welcome to do so. Or if you need one, it's actually as part of um, our uh, resources section in the secure members area. So you can download one. But at this stage, it's, it's good to have it, but it's only recommended, which you'll see later on. Then the next section is the capability assessment. So you'd be pleased to know we're only assessing based on capability, not based on competency. So what you need to demonstrate is a skills assessment. So I'm just skipping the capability interview. You don't need that at this stage. Skills assessment, which is basically a live coaching session, exactly as you would be coaching in your training course or with your friends, family, applying everything you've learned. And that's 30 minutes. And this is a real life session. So with real um, problems, um, with real topic um, that you'll be going through and you'll be getting excellent feedback based on that. So really, really brilliant uh, to have that feedback. And just to let you know, um, don't worry about it. We also have um, 11 videos to support that, which you can use to prepare. Next, we're looking for an understanding of the professional standards. That's a questionnaire. There's no right or wrong answer in that sense. It's just where you're at at the time. Um, and that will be sent to you as well. And the last thing is the self-reflection on skills assessment, which is something that you should be doing after every coaching session anyway. So we'll, we'll expect uh, you to do that. So if you look at that, nothing onerous that need that you need to provide. All of it is based on how you coach, what your capabilities are. Um, the last section is the recommended section. So this is not something you have to provide, but we would recommend that you look at that and potentially do that. So it is, you know, that you have your own coach, supervision, or even mentor coach. 
um, that you may you know, keep a CPD log, which is continuous professional development log, and also adequate insurance. So we, we do recommend professional indemnity insurance, but again, you don't need to have that. And then when you look at it, here is the application fee of 397 plus VAT, um, and the annual renewal is £140 plus VAT. Very, very simple. You just click on apply now, which will take you through the, um, the payment screen. Here you just fill in your uh, billing details. Again, you know, very, very easy. Um, just ignore what's already in there because I keep clicking on it uh, for these demonstrations and then it looks really a lot. Um, and at the moment it's five, as you can see, there are five demonstrations. So you won't have that. But basically, all you will see all of this. You'll check that it's correct. It should be only 397. Um, you can then choose a direct bank transfer or credit card a Stripe, which is great, which is very, very simple. If you have a credit card, you just agree and then you click apply now and then the payment goes through as per, you know, all the, the online payments that you would normally do. Once that is done, we will send you a welcome email to welcome you into the IPCNM and let you know exactly what the next steps are. And it also means then you'll be able to access, access the accredited area where all the goodies are. But I'm gonna stop sharing now to hand back over to Dawn for the next section. Thank you. So I'll just share my screen again. Okay, so um, it's worth just adding that we recognize some of you will have perhaps many years of experience either as a coach or a mentor in your corporate world. So all of those hours count. So let's just take a, a recent example. We had a barrister uh, who was new to coaching and on a coaching course, and he was inquiring about being accredited as a practitioner coach. Once we got talking and, and knew a little bit more about him, he was actually eligible to become an accredited fellow mentor. So he had a combo accreditation, accredited fellow mentor, uh, based on all his years worth of experience, but he was new to coaching, so he had the accredited practitioner coach and he was on a, an ATPCR route. So there's all sorts of different combinations. We're totally flexible. Uh, we want it to work for you. So that's why we have these conversations. And in those circumstances, then we'll just raise um, a, a PayPal or a Stripe invoice for you rather than you doing it online because we can work out the best way uh, to do that. All right. So, uh, yes, that's the next slide, giving you the option of um, an invoice or paying online. Now, as Bettina mentioned, you get a welcome email. You're going to get all the information that you need uh, to immediately access the secure members area, which Bettina will show you later, and everything that you need to prepare for your assessment call. What I will just say is that you don't have to find the client. We are the client. Uh, that's a popular question we get asked. Wh where am I going to find a client from? So we will match you with uh, a client who's also the assessor. We want it to be an authentic experience for you. And the person wants to benefit from being coached as well. And it's recorded. So they will then go and mark the recording. You don't have to do anything other than what you normally do, which is a 30 minute live coaching assessment call. All of that will be explained in much more detail, but you're going to get access to these masterclasses, which are great refreshers, very, very useful if you know that you need a little bit of support in a particular area. Good fun to listen to as well. And for those of you who struggle with managing nerves, because let's face it, this is an unregulated market. So we're voluntarily putting ourselves up for assessment. And who wants to be assessed? Nobody likes it. Um, so it's a little bit scary, but it's worth it because it's a bit like insurance. You don't know you need it until you need it. So for a small investment based on your training journey so far, it's kind of a no brainer that you're going to go for accreditation and be um, part of an international register. So in order to manage your nerves more effectively, we have the, the lovely Petra, who for a donation, 
we'll show you some um, EFT tapping techniques that are just going to help you manage those nerves so that you can be the best you can be when you turn up for your live assessment call. So you'll book your live assessment call, which is coaching and or mentoring. And if you're a senior or above, you'll have an interview as well. And that's David Monroe Jones in the north of England, who is head of accreditation and will hold your hand and look after you throughout the process. So Bettina mentioned we're capabilities based, which is fabulous news for you because it means that we don't uh, just appeal to the academics. We're not asking for a thesis. We're not asking for the theory. What we're asking for is a live demonstration of your capability to hold a safe space and facilitate a great coaching session. So the capability model is inclusive, it's flexible, and it's holistic in its approach. Then once you've done that, you'll get great assessment feedback, as Bettina says. Uh, it'll be very detailed in terms of what worked really well, what didn't work quite so well that you could work on. And as our members tell us, it's a massive boost to confidence. And when you're certified, uh, you're obviously being um, assessed against an industry standard because right now, when you're going for your certification, you're being uh, assessed against your peers. When you go for accreditation, it's the next level up. So it's an industry standard, uh, which is why you can call yourself a best in class practitioner. And then you get your certificate and your logo and you'll get an invite into the international directory, which is where we're sending the traffic to. We're always encouraging them to do their due diligence about who to choose and what criteria and what questions to ask, which is why we've got that downloadable e-guide, which you can point your clients to. So anybody who's saying, oh, I don't know between you and such and such, give them this e-guide link and say, you know, I meet all the criteria in here. So, it means that you've joined a worldwide community of like-minded professionals and we celebrate your success on social media. So lots of rah, 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 again, driving traffic to your individual directory. So those are the eight steps. So now we're just going to very quickly explore some of the questions that Bettina and I typically get asked. Um, as we say, do your due diligence in the same way you would when you make any purchase, you know, research the options that are best for you, your budget, your needs, et cetera. So uh, one of the questions, Bettina, we hear a lot is, well, why should I get accredited? None of my peers are. Uh, nobody asks me, am I accredited? What's your take on this, please? So I would say, um, you know, really look at the industry and where the industry is going because that's that's one of the indicators um that that will tell you whether you know you really need to be accredited or whether you want to be accredited as dawn previously said there's so many coaches now it's one of the fastest growing in, growing industries so how do you actually differentiate yourself accreditation is one of those differentiators um it's specifically for clients who may or may not have had a negative experience and also there's a lot of coaching at the moment in the press um, with different uh, court cases going on especially in the US um, accreditation gives also that extra layer of assurance to clients because they know an external body has actually um, assured verified that this coach is actually who they say they are and that they're coaching and they can coach um, and that they've signed up to the professional standards and ethics and all of that, which, you know, it gives clients a little bit of a framework and that reassurance. Um, just for the UK in particular, I also want to add a few things. Um, a lot of coaching organizations, if you do want to become an associate there, they now expect that the coach is accredited and they will ask for that accreditation status. Another place where you might want to look for work, um, for example, the public sector, generally when they do a request for proposal, it's usually on a, on a website and you have to fill in a big document. Often it's online. Almost always these public sector organizations are asking for accreditation and who you're accredited with as a coach. So that's, that's basically an entry criterion um, that you have to fulfill. Otherwise, you just cannot apply um, for that work. 
There's a lot of corporate organizations as well. So very large corporates, even down to so SME, um, so small, medium enterprise level that are also asking for that. So it is well worth investigating whether, you know, in your area where you're looking for work, whether that is a criterion or not. And actually, you know, as I said before, it does make you stand out because you have another, um, an extra string to your bow that others don't have. Mm. Yeah, so education sector, corporate sector, uh, when you're bidding, when you want to be an associate, there's increasing mm. numbers of uh, areas where it's now a given that you're not a member, you are actually accredited. And you mentioned uh, uh, another time when we were working together, Bettina, that sometimes they even want you to have uh, or tick the box that you've got a supervisor or your own coach or mentor as well. Exactly. So certainly in the public sector, when I've applied there uh, for work, they have asked for my supervisor. They even wanted the name and address of the person and a letter saying that I've had X many hours of supervision. They also ask for insurance. So generally, so all of the coaching providers that I've ever uh, worked with as an associate or looked to work with as an associate, they all wanted the three things, um, insurance, accreditation and um um and supervision basically yeah okay so that's and what why do you think it's a good idea to apply for accreditation while you're in training so for me i mean the thing is i did it afterwards as, as you know dawn um however if i had done it while i was in training um to be honest there's such there's, there's such a vast amount of resources available, it would have made my life a lot easier. So, you know, I had to craft my own coaching agreement when I went through it. It's already provided in the IAPCM resource library. So it takes a lot, a whole lot of work away. Then there is a fabulous course around building your business, either as a new coach or already as a experienced coach. Again, fabulous. I wish I had that when I was going through my own coach training because it would have, again, saved me enormous amount of thinking time, trial and error time, probably years worth of work trying to get to grips with what type of business do I want? What? How am I niching? Who are my clients? How do I get clients? So it answers mm -hmm. all of those questions. So even those two are such fabulous value while you're going through your coach training and saves you a lot of work um, afterwards. The other mm. thing would be the network, because, I mean, again, you know, the IPCNM or actually, you know, I, I um, encountered the IPCM as in its previous version. The network was fabulous because there's so many coaches there that you can ask for advice um, in your country. You can connect with them, even collaborate, for example, if you wanted to. And the other thing I would say is, you know, start looking at your marketing. So, you know, you get your directory profile, which means, you know, you have a landing page already if you don't want to get a website and you can write blog posts, do book reviews, all sorts of things to get your name out there while you are in training or you can prepare for it. And once you finish your training, then you can hit the button and it's all there for you. Mm. That's a really good point. Uh, so thank you for raising that. Yes, when you've been invited to create your directory profile, you might not want to spend more money on a website. So that is your shop window. It will do everything for you apart from a calendar and a shopping cart. So as Bettina says, you can upload your videos, your testimonials, your client facing signature program, uh, information, etc. So well remembered. Uh, another question we get is, what if I don't pass my accreditation? Can I retake it? And what does it cost? Yes, <laughs> you can retake it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that common that people don't pass. Um, the great thing is you get fabulous feedback. So even if you don't pass first time around, you get such good feedback that the next time you'll definitely pass. Um, what I would recommend, look at those 11 videos, the capability videos and work through them because that prepares you excellently for what you need to be doing in the session itself. Take advantage of Petra's offerings so you don't suffer from nerves in the session. And if by you know chance you didn't do so well on the day, it's actually only £150 to retake it and book the assessor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you're you're right. And what I would say, and I've heard the accreditation team say this before, even at the point of uh, you about to start, if you feel you're not in a good space, you didn't sleep well, there was a family emergency that's thrown you off, cancel your assessment call. We'd rather you do that than go through it and then afterwards say, well, I wasn't on my best performance anyway. Um so uh, when can we start the accreditation journey? We've already discussed that long. Oh, how long does accreditation typically take, Bettina? Well, how long is a piece of string? So, um, you know, actually from, from our side, once you've applied, provided all the information, it takes between two and six weeks. So it's actually fairly quick. Um, depends really what you are trying to get to and what you want to do. So most people, if they apply while they're training, they tend to do it within six months. Um, some people take a year because they want to take that time, but very few people take longer than a year. But this is really up to you. From the IPCNM sides, it's, it's a two to six week process. And then it's really up to you how you want to manage that process and you know how quickly you want to get through that process. Yeah, I suppose the other answer is, well, it depends on how long your training course is. If you if you apply for your accreditation uh, and to be pending at the beginning of your course, it's going to take as long as it takes for you to complete the course. So that's another way of looking at it. Um, and how do we get our 60 practical hours? This is a big, big one for a lot of students, isn't it, Bettina? Oh, it is. It is. And I remember when I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, when I started training, how do I get those 60 hours? Well, actually, it's not that difficult, it turns out. So, for example, I mean, you will have coaching peers that you're coaching with on the course, so you can continue working with them as a group. There's friends and family and there's other people around you. I mean, as soon as you start, you, you start putting yourself out there a little bit, um, you will find people will be very, very interested in coaching with you. Um, you will, you know, you might actually already have paying clients or clients that might be willing to pay. You know, think of where you work or, you know, maybe sort of networking groups that you attend or there's even Facebook groups where you can, you know, off coaches who, who might be willing to do reciprocal coaching. However, if you're completely stuck, there is actually an offer on the IPCNM website that's called Reciprocoach. Um, for a you know small fee, Reciprocoach puts you in touch with another coach. You get six sessions um, that you do reciprocal coaching with, and actually, you know, it's a great offer because you also get some some really detailed feedback from the other person. So you know, so there are lots of options how you can get the sixty hours, and also there is no you know, there's no time limit in a sense. So we're not forcing you to do it within a certain time frame. You do it in the time frame that works for you. Mm. I remember when I was head of mentoring, one of the, the questions I frequently got was how how can I find people to practice on that felt authentic? Because obviously family and friends, they're kind of making it up as they go along. And they're not necessarily the best ones to give you feedback either. But um, as you say, the reciprocal coach deal that we have means that, you're building your coaching hours, you're building your confidence, you're building your networking skills and your exposure to international coaching models that are out there. So um, what hours, if any, don't count, Bettina? So there, there are actually some, and it's interesting, um, when I talk to the students, um, some students are already quite advanced and they're, they've They've already created their, their packages and their training and everything. And there's something called like evergreen um, coaching, which is basically you record a video where you are talking somebody through a coaching process, but it's not live. So anything that's not live does not count. Whatever okay. is live counts. So live means you're you're speaking to some you're speaking with somebody either as we're doing now dawn and i online um, via zoom or teams or something you can do it on the phone so you don't have to necessarily see the other person or they're you um, or you can do face to face but it has to be live you can mm -hmm. also do group coaching that also counts um but what does what how it does count is basically if you do an hours group coaching it's only the hour it's not times x many people who attended the group Yes. Okay. So um, 
a question I hear quite a lot is which countries are you in? And as the name applies, we're international. Uh, so we've got members all around the world. And as far as we're aware, there are no countries that do not recognize us. So I suppose the far, final question and the big one, uh, Bettina, is why the IAPCM? How are we different to the other coach accreditation bodies? So <laughs> there are there are actually, I would say, it's probably three areas that I would want to highlight. Um, okay. So number one, we're the only one at the moment who are only focusing on accreditation. A lot of the others, what they do is you can just become a member and that's it. And just you stay with the certificated process or you just have your certificate and you remember. But you do not go through accreditation, whereas with the IPCNM, that's the only route. You only it, you can only get accredited, nothing else. So just being a member is we, we don't do that. Um, the second one is actually we're also accredited. So, again, for from what I know and what I've seen of the others, none of the others, A, are independent and B, they're actually accredited by someone else. So we're actually accredited, as you can see, by the um, British um, Ombudsman. So the I IRCM, as they're called. So we actually have that accreditation status. So we've gone through that ourselves. So we're not just asking you to go through it. We've gone through it as an organization. Um, and the third point is actually a financial point that I want to make. And I was quite surprised when I discovered that um, was that actually a lot of um, coaching organizations, they ask for you when, they, when you do a continuous professional development, they ask for what it's called CPD credit so that is something that you get you, you do your training with whoever is the training provider you pay for that and then usually you have to pay for an extra certificate that has on it the hours that you've trained and it costs extra money we don't ask mm -hmm. for that so when we're asking for your cpd log you just put in the training that you've done the books you've read the whatever it is say what you got out of it what you've learned how you applied it to your coaching you don't have to pay anything extra that you've already done. Whereas with a lot of the others, you also have to pay the extra um, credits that you then send in to prove that you've done it. So that's that's mm. how I would say that's some of the differences. There are lots of others as well. So different focus, different types of coaches they accept. But I would always recommend do your research, give them a call, have the conversation and find out you know which which organization is right for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Bettina says, there's lots of uh, lots of unique differences. Obviously, we're all accreditation bodies. We do it very differently, and our focus is very different. Ours has always been on the end user, which is the student or the client. Um, probably because our head of professional standards was quite senior in the NHS, so it's all first do no harm. Uh, recognised very early on, we're working with people's minds, and that's never more true than post COVID situation. So. Okay, so um, we have, oh, and this is another question we get. Can you be a member of more than one accreditation body? So the answer is yes. Um, you can be a member of a, a country specific one. So for instance, there's one in South Africa where if you're going for corporate work, they'd like you to be a member of that. But if you look uh, an international coach, then you want to be accredited with an international provider as well. So you can be accredited with who you want um, in any geographical area. It's entirely up to you. You get different things from different accreditation bodies. Some you get a certificate and you might not hear from them from one year to the next and that might suit you. Others, you're going to have a, a huge amount of support and that might be just what you need to build your business. So in terms of return on investment, we provide an annual statement of what you had access to last year. So at the end of every January, we give you a summary of what you had access to, uh, what you would have spent if you had had uh, all those privileges that you and your business can benefit from. So it saves you a huge amount of money. It's broken down into CPD, personal, professional, community, financial and um What's the other one? Uh, PR, PR, work opportunities, et cetera. 
So um, Bettina uh, will go into the secure members area and bring that life to, to life to you in a minute. But firstly, I just wanted to show you uh, a resource that is incredibly popular, and that is our drop-in clinics. So essentially, we're providing you all the resources you need to build your business. So the first uh, Thursday of every month, we have a drop-in clinic. Why? Because we recognize as solopreneurs, it's very easy for us to feel isolated. And you don't even have to have a, a specific issue to drop in. It's just a case of it's good to talk. So have a cup of coffee, chat with whoever else has dropped into the clinic. Um, and if you do need specific support, Teresa is best place to signpost you to some other support. Then on the second Tuesday of every month, we have the member orientation drop-in clinic. We do this because now that we've got such a huge complementary CPD and business building package, as I mentioned, it was about £16,000 last year, a new practitioner will be thinking, oh, where do I start? Where do I find this? Uh, how do I work my way through this, et cetera? So you can drop into Joe's clinic, ask your questions, and very calmly, she's going to wrap a big warm arm around you, point you in the right direction, look after you, and make sure that you've got all the documentation, resources, uh, links, et cetera, that you need to grow your business. And then to complement that, on the third Wednesday of every month, you can see where I'm going with this. There's a weekly clinic on different days of the week. We have John who runs the fully booked coach and wouldn't we all like to be a fully booked coach? So he's very much working on LinkedIn, which is obviously where the professional leads are. How do you use the LinkedIn technology to your advantage and show that you're a professional and fill your diary with those all important discovery calls? It's all about the numbers. And then lastly, uh, but not least, on the fourth Monday of every month, we have the Business of Coaching Dropping Clinic. Now, Bettina's already mentioned to you, we have an education section and we have a great 12 modular self-teach program. I'm not going to go into it because Bettina's going to show you it in the secure members area, but that is now brought to life in a dropping clinic with Nikki Wilde. So, all this information, of which we appreciate there's a lot, which is why Joe has the orientation clinic, is communicated to you through the weekly bulletin, the mid-month advance notice, the end-of-month summary, and your annual re uh, return on investment statement. So if literally within a week, if you don't receive a weekly bulletin, flag it up, you're missing out on all the privileges that are available to you. So now I'm going to sh stop sharing and hand over to Bettina. Okay, let me just share my screen now and you will see in a second the secure members area. So, um, to log in here, so I'm, I've already logged in and I've already gone on to the right page. What you would do is you click on accredited area and the logout would say log in, you log in, and then it takes you to this landing page here. And let me scroll down a little bit so you can see what we have here. So these are the tiles we have. We already talked about directory um, submission. So this is the directory where you would have all your information, where you can upload your videos the testimonials and all these good things. You can submit testimonials here and your member information. So I'm not gonna go into those three tiles, because to be honest, they're more fun from an admin perspective, and I'm sure you'll get to know them very well once you've joined. You can also submit a guest blog if, if you want to. Um, you can either submit it here or you can send it to our editor. Um, that then goes out to um, you know, different um, pages. So what I want to cover is actually what you've probably been waiting for, is the fabulous business building course. So that's here under education. Oh. Okay, so when you click on that, wait, what will, what you'll see is the business of coaching and mentoring, and that's what the course is called. So you'll have two strands, one new coaches and mentors and established coaches and mentors. When you then look through this, and I'm just going to focus on the new coaches and mentors, assuming that, that you might be new, and actually it's really good to go through both. 
Um, even as an established coach, I always dip in and out of both because it is there's such a wealth of information there that you know you can't take it in all in one go. So giving you some example what's here, I mean, a lot of people want to know our pricing, don't they? So what should your sessions cost? Or how should you do packages? What should they cost? What should they contain? You know, how do you have a com sales conversation? It's, you know, most coaches ask me about that. Choosing a niche, you know, what's what's my specialism here? Positioning yourself in the market. Money and cash flow, which is also very, very important when we start our coaching. And, you know, hiring a bookkeeper accountant, what should I look for? And then all these practicalities that, yeah, they feel a bit, you know, admin -y, but they're really really important like what what records do we need to keep what's what's the point of insurance what should we look for in insurance gdpr you know data protection how do we protect our clients data so all of this is available here let me just click on for example the niching and so show you what you're actually getting so it's not just a box on a page so each of those boxes on a page has a link which then takes you to a video. And it's a bit slow to load, but here it is. So here you've got the video. Generally, almost all of the videos are between 40 minutes and an hour long. So there's a lot of content in there. Um, and you have them as a resource for yourself the whole time. So this is the brilliant thing. You can dip in and out of this resource at any one time. So if, if you just want to look something up and think, oh gosh, I really need to understand, you know, for example, I just want to know something about client management or client retention. You just go in, have a look, see what there is. And, you know, as I say, it's there for you. And you can, we can listen to it as many times as you want. There's no limit on that. So this is the um, education area. There's a lot of good stuff there. And it takes quite a, quite a while to get through that. I also wanted to touch on something else um, and actually the resources, um, especially the um, capabilities that we talked about and the capability training that prepares you for um, your um, assessment call. So again, if you look here, there is so much in here. There's so many tiles in there. And actually, this one, this area is currently under construction. We're currently tidying that up. Um, and, you know, as you might have guessed, add more to it, to it. So we actually have a lot of information on a, a separate uh, Google Drive, which we're now slowly moving over to the side. But the thing that you're probably most interested in at this point um, if you want to go for accreditation is where do you find all these capability videos to prepare for the session? So they're here. So that's the 11 coaching capability videos. And I just click into that net there. Um, I could have also gone in the search here, search the knowledge base and type that in. And it would have gotten me to this as well. But I thought I'll show you the pathway. So here are the videos. They're split into all the different topics that you might need when you're going for your assessment. And it's also great to dip back in and out, even as an established and accredited coach, you know, because there's all sorts of things like action planning, powerful question, active listening, and actually quite interesting um, for World Listening Day recently, when I was doing a listening event on the beach with um, some of the local people here, I went back into the active listening section and actually refreshed my memory as to what active listening is actually is and how do we do it just sort of get myself into that space. Absolutely fabulous resource. So that's that's where this is here. Um, I just also wanted to go back and touch on something else for you, um, which we just earlier on talked about and let me just go back so that we're here and go back to the main page so, no. so the solution partners so we talked about reciprocal coach um, and that's actually one of our solution partners but there are loads of others so 
if you look here, so there's all sorts of partners under each of those tiles. I'm just going to click on the where the reciprocal code is so you get an idea. But just seeing here how much information there again is. So if you're looking for a discount or a special offer for any of those, you will find them in this section. And there is things like bookkeeping, there is supervision, there's insurance, um, there is, you know, website support, VA support, so that's virtual assistant support, all sorts. So again, really useful um, space. And if you get lost in all of this, because I appreciate there's so much information there, go into Joe's clinic. You know, she is brilliant at explaining where things are. And she will point you in the right direction if you get lost on the page. So just want to point out, here's the reciprocal offer. So if you, you know, just want to refresh um, or try something out with another coaching partner, or indeed you're just missing a few hours uh, for your uh, accreditation, that's here there for you as an offer. So I could go on for this for probably another day, but in the interest of time, I will hand over back to Dawn now. Thank you, Bettina. I would have shared my screen. Okay. So there's lots of things that you can be doing while you're waiting actively, either waiting to become certified, depending on where you are on your training, uh, but certainly waiting to fill your diary with clients. And so one of those things, if you like writing, is create your client facing signature program. So I shared this slide with you just really to inspire you what these two ladies achieved within a year of becoming um, certified as a coach. They went on a book writing course that I do with Ruby, which is um, a paid for discounted training. They created a client facing signature program that they got accredited. All of those things gave them a client facing speech, a masterclass, things that they could write about. So while they were waiting to have clients knock down their door, they had a lot to write about and comment about on social media, uh, which drew traffic towards them. And look how professional it looks. It looked like they had been coaches for years. So this is a benefit only to the IAPCNM members. If you have a client facing signature program, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it could be weight management, it could be relationships, it could be debt, careers, whatever. And it doesn't matter what medium or format you deliver it, you can have it accredited just to help it stand out in what is, as we say, it's a very noisy digital space. We have our own book review club. We think it's really, really important. And in fact, so important uh, that we don't, uh, as, being, as Bettina said, we don't charge, but we make it freely available to non-IA PCNM members as well. So all the CPD that we offer is available to everybody. Um, for non-members, it's available for a limited time. For members, they've got lifetime access. So we want you to read more books in less time. So you get the gems in each of the books. Now, if you're new to building your business, you will love this book, How to Win and Keep Clients. Uh, it's a great business handbook. To help you write your book, we have an author's interview series very inspirational. All these people are number one bestsellers. They're training providers. They're TED talkers. Um, they know what they're doing and they're sharing with us what their journey was, what their writing journey was, what their publishing journey was, and more importantly, how has it transformed uh, their business? And then we've got the CPD Masterclass series. There's usually one a week. Uh, where you can see you've got people who are TED talkers, they're coach training providers, they're master class, master coaches, fellow coaches, very generously paying it forward, giving their time, sharing their success and um, tips and techniques and strategies so that we can um, aspire to what they've achieved as well. If you're in the child and adolescent field, we've got free supervision on the first Sunday of every month. And for those who need a moment to chill and get off the hamster wheel, we have a midweek meditation guided by yours truly. 
Uh, we have a podcast, which is a great piece of PR because you go on it with your client. So we get members of the public say, I didn't know there was such a thing as a, a divorce coach or um, whatever. You know, they had no idea they could be coached on that subject. So uh, now we come to the book writing course that I run with Ruby. Uh, and we're in our fourth year, I think, of having authors. We believe it's one of those other differentiators. So become trained, uh, be get uh, get uh, accredited, um, get insured if your country offers insurance. Not every country does, which is why we don't make it mandatory. And have something published. It doesn't have to be a tomb. It can be a short book. Well, people love short books. We have a very short attention span. So our program is 90 pages in 90 days. 90 days, you've got a draft book in your hand. So if you can write a daily blog or something like that, you've got a blog, uh, the makings of a book very quickly. Anyway, all of that, that's a whistle stop tour, but that's all culminating in a week long annual CPD business building event every May where the pioneers in our industry very generously come together and do uh, masterclasses for the benefit of everybody. We have an affiliation program. Why? Because if you're proud of your industry and your accreditation body, we want to reward you by introducing us to your peers. So at a practitioner level, if you introduce, what, five people, you wouldn't have to pay your annual renewal fee. So that was the idea because an annual renewal fee is £140 a year. So introduce four, five, six people a year and it's covered. So that is more or less it, um, other than to touch on the support. So other than the international community, all the resources that Bettina has shared with you from an education and the business building point of view, there's also one-to-one -one support and there's also specific support. So for instance, Bettina is a supervisor in training. Very soon we'll be joining our team of uh, trained supervisors offering support to the members. So we've got mentors, coaches and supervisors, which is increasingly a requirement, uh, particularly when you're bidding in corporate world. So for those of you who are watching this um, as part of your residential program, uh, you will have the benefit of uh, 18 months for the price of 12, 48 hours after you've seen this video. So there you go. If you want to join the most caring, sharing, practical hands-on resource available, which is what our members tell us we are, then you'll want to pick up the phone and have that conversation with us. Talk about your needs and expectations. We'll answer your questions and take it from there. So just to wrap up, coaching is a proven mythology for personal and professional growth. Nearly everybody is open to being coached these days. It's not the stigma that it used to be to the extent that CEOs of many top companies have their own coach. And for good reason, because as Tom Landry said, a coach is somebody who tells you what you don't want to hear, has you see what you don't want to see. So you can be who you've always known you can be. And that's why coaches have never been more in demand because they are proven to make a significant difference to performance mentally and physically. So finally, if I can take you back to when you were choosing your uh, training provider, when you were considering your choice of who to train with, maybe the fact that they were an accredited training provider had a bearing on who you chose. They were independently accredited and that gave you the reassurance that you needed that the course met international quality standards. Now, the same is going to be true when clients are making their choice. They're going to be looking at the differentiators between you and another. So if you want to benefit from a faster track, reduced fee option to your personal accreditation status as a benefit of having trained with your training provider who's already invested in their accreditation, then you can apply for the next 48 hours and benefit from 18 months for the price of 12. So before I finish, I'm just going to share a few fun facts with you. Uh, your annual renewal fee, so that's year two, is 140 pound, which equates to 35p a day. And I was doing some research, what could you buy for 35p a day? 
And I jokingly said, I don't think you can get a, a, a newspaper. Um, I think it costs you a, over a pound a day. A, a daily cup of flat white coffee is over 250. In some areas, it's much as five pound. A Mars bar a day, it well, it may help you work, rest and play, but it will set you back 60 plus P a day or a healthier option, an apple. Uh, which means to say, if you're enjoying reading a daily newspaper while sipping a cup of coffee, eating some chocolate, that's a whopping 30 plus pound a week, which represents anything in between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds a year. And what have you got to show for it? Nothing except perhaps being a kilo or two heavier. So for 35p, which is about 50 cents a day, you're going to gain not weight, but access to 16,000 pounds worth of CPD and business building support, one-to-one -one support, group support, discounts, resources, and the opportunity to develop not only yourself, but your business acumen and keep your skills updated. That's over and above your accreditation certificate. So I'll leave you with that thought and wish you good luck. And I hope we'll be welcoming you to our international community soon. Thank you. Any final words, Bettina? I just I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions at all, please do get in touch. We're always very happy to have the conversation either on email or on Zoom or any other medium that that works for you. Yeah, increasingly it's WhatsApp, I find. Exactly. <laughs> OK, thank you, Bettina. I really appreciate your support here today. Thank you.